Kitty, what do you think of my painting? Do you like it? Okay, so I want to show you my process for some of the painting for the Labrador um, picture. So right here I have two screens showing you um, a close-up of my paper, which hopefully you can see in the little thumbnail, I got it very wet. And I was using a big mop brush with a lot of water in it as well. So I was working very wet and wet and I used um, light green for that green, that bright green color. And I'll look up which brand that is. And I also have phthalo blue going on. Uh, later on, I'll use some ultramarine blue. And so I've got several different colors that I'm using to create the background. And I wanted it to be kind of dreamy and ethereal. So I kept it really loose and wet. So, um, I mean, it was dripping. Like there were puddles of water on the paper in a lot of the areas, especially the corners. And then closer to the dog, it was a little drier so that I could maintain some control so I could create some fur textures on the edges of his fur. And um, then I would just would drop in different colors into the pools of water and just kind of let them merge together. In some of the, um, on some of the background, I kept it completely dry to save a few little white spaces just to add some sparkle. So you do want to think about that when you're doing a loose background. If you save a few of the little white spaces and just leave some little islands of dryness and not paint in them and let them get really, um, or stay really dry and stay very white. Um, it just, it just adds some freshness and some sparkle to the background. And, um, and then keep the rest of it really loose and dreamy like I did for this picture. Now, another thing that I want you to keep in mind is that, um, that um, front paw of the dog, his right, our left, I kept very soft and I painted into that with clear water and then painted some of the background into that, um, his right paw, his right leg. And you can see how it kind of created a lost edge there. And I just think that attaches the dog to the background and gives it a dreamy, um, a dreamy look. And it also, um, it also, gives it some movement because to me it looks like this dog is kind of walking through this grass so um, a little bit of uh, lost and found edges helps create movement in a painting okay so here I'm just adding to his fur I as I usually do I just wet the whole dog where I wanted to have soft areas and I'm using ultramarine blue a little bit with the burnt sienna just to create some interest. And I wanted to show you how I use my palette. And the reason why I'm showing you my palette is I want to see, I want you to see how much I scrub that brush into the paint. And I'm sorry if you hear a lot of background noise from, from my son. <laughs> he's got swim school today, so he's home with me. Now you see why when he wasn't in preschool, I didn't do a lot of videos, but anyway, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah. So then when I'm doing these darker little passages, I, I work more on drier paper just to keep the little sharp, very dark areas in their place. And I'm using ultramarine blue and burnt sienna in the shadows Whoa. where it's cooler. Whoa. And it's so important just to get those, those darks really dark to give the dog's face some dimension. 
So you guys will have to tell me what you think of this way of filming the painting. I was thinking that I can kind of zoom in a lot better when I hold the camera with one hand and then I paint with the other, but I know it's a little bouncy, a lot bouncy. So is it too um, disconcerting to have me hold my camera like that? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. What do you guys think? Would you rather that I go back to just putting my camera in a tripod and the camera's further away and I don't zoom in as much, but it's not so bouncy and crazy? Or does this add some interest and you can really see the nitty gritty details of what the painting looks like? Okay, so here I'm using Ultramarine Blue and Windsor Violet to add some interest in the shadows, to deepen the shadows. And um, I worked wet, I, wet and dry, and then I went back over and moistened the edges so that it kind of all blended together a little bit better. I am trying to keep this painting as soft as possible and getting some Windsor Violet and some um, alt, um, Burnt Sienna, sorry. And uh, I do find that Windsor Violet is an interesting um, color to use to cool down Burnt Sienna as well. It kind of adds some interest in a little bit different color. So experiment with that if you want and try it and see what you think. I really like how the violet adds another dimension of color to a painting. So I used uh, light washes of Windsor Violet a lot in this painting. And I just think it added a lot of interest and makes it seem a little bit more sophisticated. So you may be seeing more purples in my shadows soon. The painting, I think it needs a little bit more in the foreground right here. So I'm going to try to hold my phone and video as I go. So here's the painting. And I think it needs a little bit more in the foreground right here. So I'm going to try to hold my phone and video as I go, and I want to keep this loose and ethereal. I just love how I've gotten that effect, so I'm just going to go in and put in some little streaks of clear water, and then look at my messy palette. I'm such a naughty little artist. Naughty, 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 naughty. Oh well. Okay, so yeah. I think I want to use my rigor and some ultramarine for the most part. You see how much I scrub my paintbrush into that watercolor paint just to really, I'm going to get a little bit of this green, a little bit of blue and create a couple little puddles. So I have a couple little different puddles. How about that? And I'm going to get my purple ready so I can just put different things on my brush quickly. All right, here we go. I'm so nervous. I don't want to hurt the painting at this point. You know, I'm just really happy with where it is. All right. Ultramarine blue. And as you can see, I am making a point to make all these grasses kind of point to the dog. You kind of can use grass as a visual pointer to help the eye go where you want it to and just the very darkest little bits at the very bottom is what I'm gonna kind of stick to and you want to try to vary your stroke so I'm using the side of my brush for some of these and then the tip for others and each brush full I'm getting a different combination of color just to keep it interesting and soft I don't want all that there hmm. here. 
Okay, and then I'm gonna get some really dark. Actually, get some fairly green green. Green is a very powerful color. You do not want to overdo it. You want to tone it down often with some red. And I've got purple in here, so I feel good about that. I'm gonna put a little few. Okay, now what I'm gonna do next is let that dry a little. Right now I'm gonna put some splashes of water in. You're not gonna be able to see that. Nope. I don't want that to become a splot on his face, so I'm gonna just add water to those splashes that I don't like where they went. And see those little splots? You can't really see them, probably, unless I zoom in for you. Little splashes can add some nice texture. And see, I use those grasses to really point the eye towards the dog. I'm just going in with clear water and just to add to the texture of the grass. Some cauliflower hopefully will happen naturally, but that's kind of where I'm at. Let's see what Kitty thinks. Kitty, do you think I did a good job right there? Yeah, you can't even speak. It's You're just so overwhelmed, aren't you? Okay, this has dried quite a bit. So, this is actually a good time to go in with the clear, fairly drip, almost dripping wet brush and make some Okay, to balance this out, see how I have some blue over here? I think I want to put a little skitty, skitty skosh of something over here too, just to just to balance it out a little bit. I might just balance it out a tiny little bit.